Hey guys, this is Paul and Ray with the No Color Thick Skin Podcast. We're coming at you today with our fifth episode. Uh, we're super excited about it. Uh, before we hop in, uh, as always, we like to kind of touch base. Um, Ray, how was your week? Man, um, my week's been pretty good, Paul. Um, thank you for asking. Um, you know, this is my long week, so um, with with it being my long week, we are uh, in a pretty pretty busy season at mm. the moment at work and uh just serving when are serving, we ever going to know what you do serv- serving 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 uh is very very um has been a lot this week i'll say that mm. um, but it's something that we love to do and the team that i work for is uh, just a great team um my my son, he was a little ill earlier this week. Um, he suffers from some terrible allergies, man. Mm. And we tell the school this all the time. And we just tell him, hey, we just got to give him some allergy meds. But they're like, oh, he may have strep. He may oh. have this. He may have this. And they just yeah. go so far. And so now, you know, we've got to get his mom to go and take him to the doctor to just be like, no, he's fine. It's just allergies. I'm like, we know this. Yeah. So yeah, just got my buddy some um some allergy meds, man, and just got him feeling good. So I talked to him earlier. Uh, I talked to him last night and earlier today, and he's you know feeling pretty good. So that that made me happy. And uh, I got a nice stretch today, man. So um, a good stretch. So my back's feeling loose. Feeling all you know, limbered. Feeling all limber and light, my man. Mm-hmm. So, um, but overall, been a uh, been a pretty good week, my man. Uh, what about yourself? Well, that sounds awesome. Thank you. My awesome friend. and partly not awesome. <laughs> Uh, my week was, uh, it was a lot, um, kids, uh, just different things. Um, a uh, little bit of illness, yeah, you know, going yeah, on, yeah. uh, things are going around. I guess that's just a springtime thing too, you know, so, allergies yeah. plus whatever else comes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that plus, uh, lots of good things at work, uh, getting, uh, getting some more people, uh, hired on and, um, trained up and stuff like that. So. So you growing your team? Like growing so getting, my getting team. More, more team members over there. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, God. Yeah, that's great, man. Because uh, for a while there, man, it almost felt as if nobody wanted to work, right? <laughs> like it was like yeah, nobody exactly. wanted to work. It was like work. Why? Well, we, yeah. Man, it was crazy for a little while. So you, you're able it to is. found you you found some some good people to bring on. Yeah, I found some good people, and um, you know, um, you know when what happens to my job, unfortunately, when I'm having to do, you know, these other positions is my, my job kind of gets, uh, put by the wayside a little bit. So I've got so much catch up to do. So now I'm kind of doing that. So where we're catching up on, uh, things, other things that I've, I've got to get going, um, for our little store out in the middle of nowhere. Mm. Um, Hey, uh, stuff costs money and that money has to come from somewhere. And so we got to make sure that, uh, you know, we're making money and able to pay for things and, you know, pay people their we need all the money stuff. Yeah. We need paychecks all the monies, and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got to make sure people are doing OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a lot, man. You know, when you <clears throat> excuse me, when you go into a leadership position like that, mm. uh, that you have, you know, when when you're not accustomed to you know, the day to day grind of, you know, you, you essentially. I don't want to say you control people's lives, but I mean, you have a very, very huge impact on the oh, livelihood yeah. of people, man. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, people are relying on you to um, do some great things. And like you said, make sure that, you know, payroll is taken care of, that they can, you know, take care of their families and things. So mm-hmm. man, that's a, that's a, that's a big thing. Man. It's a big thing. It's big and, uh, you know, stressful, but, um, I'm fortunate in that, um, you know, I don't have, you know, people breathing down my neck or anything, but, um, at the same time, you know, it's a lot of self checking to make sure that, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and Mm -hmm. making the right move and whatnot. So, you know, I'm not perfect by any means. I'm, um, never done this before. Uh, so, (laughs) (laughs) you know, after, after about a year and a half of doing exactly what I'm doing right now, um, you know, it's almost like you, you stay stagnant and the business fails or you continue to grow and things get progressively more and more difficult and complex. Mm -hmm. But that's the only, those are really the only two options in a lot of ways. Absolutely. So, um, you know, it's, uh, 
anyway, but that's that's my job, my yeah. my week yeah, there. Good um, deal, man. Things at home are good though. Good and deal. Uh, yeah. uh you did um <clears throat> you disappointed me uh mm. Unfortunately, um, I, uh, <laughs> I walked in and I uh, laid my beautiful brown eyes upon <laughs> thine and just wasn't looking the way I remember looking at you. And I said, Paul, you you cut the luscious locks. Yeah, my I, I got uh, got a little haircut. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, the the wife wasn't having it. <laughs> so if Mama Bear doesn't like it, hey, then we go. Uh, you're right. If Mama Bear says, "Hey, um, it's getting mm-hmm. a little long," all right, getting yeah. a little long there. We need to uh, need to take that off. So if uh, if Mama Bear said she wanted to cut low, completely understand, man. You still look good, boy. It's like uh, you know when the hedges grow a little bit too tall. It's about how she thought of it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's like man, man you I need a weedy i thought you were about to give me one of those uh oh. you know, them old men uh the oh, analogies or something. <laughs> yeah, no. when the head just get too long and you can't see the sunshine <laughs> over the rainbows then the the giraffes don't necessarily um eat the hay <laughs> at noon time at noon like, time what did you just say uncle ralph you said what <laughs> Oh man! Oh, man. I thought she was about to hit me with a wild one, man. But no, nah, yeah, yeah. The hair just. I don't have that that good old older knowledge yet. I'm glad you don't. I'm trying to get there. I'm glad you don't. The but, stuff makes my head hurt, man. But, yeah. <laughs> so, and another thing you did, Paul, um, you had a delicious treat waiting for me today, and oh. which was so unfair. <laughs> uh, because I've been so weak this week <laughs> mentally, and. Uh, you know, it was, it was tough when I saw this beautiful, nice brown, just nice chocolate, soft chocolate chip cookie just sitting there waiting for me. And I could not fight the urge, man. Why did you do that to me? Why did you make me do that? Well, you know, it's the ones closest to us that are uh, make it easier to stumble, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you made it. Made it very just made it easy, so easy. Man. Oh my goodness! But you know what? Uh, it was a gift, though. It was a gift, and you know, I'm I am working on getting better at receiving gifts from people. I'm trying hey. that. So thank you for helping me along. That's that something journey. I need so, to work on too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think just as you know, you real know, me. Maybe I should work on it a little bit with you. Uh, like, you know, stop. That was enough. <laughs> that, that one time was enough. All right. So I, I'm putting my foot down. That was enough. I don't need any more gifts from you, my friend. Yeah. That's it. But you know what? Um, fo- follow me. If you if you don't mind, because you presented me with a um, <clears throat> a chocolate chip cookie, right? Yeah, and you know the chocolate chip cookies are amazing and wonderful. That and, is, and uh, really really good. Um, but if the sole conversation of cookies, I don't want to just exclude. You know anyone else or anybody else you know i want you know if if chocolate chip cookies matter i think that if you follow me if chocolate oh. chip cookies matter then i think no matter how you feel about cookies all cookies probably should matter if uh if that's you know the world in which we live in i can't just say that only chocolate chip cookies matter like chocolate chip cookies are cookies yes and they are a part of the cookie family but um if i don't say that all cookies matter then i i don't think i should be able to say chocolate chip cookies matter am i wrong there or am i right or am i here am i there or what all chocolate chip cookies matter oh all (laughs) chocolate chip cookies matter not just all cookies but just all chocolate chip cookies matter (laughs) Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there. Mm -hmm. I'm right there. Okay. Okay. Uh, But, you know, uh, you got your snickerdoodles. Uh, You got mm -hmm. your um, thumbprint. You got your uh, soft baked, you know, Walmart iced, uh, you know, obligatory. And then, you know, the white 
ones. The whites, uh, yeah. You the know, they're, they're good. They're good. They're, good. Yeah, they're okay. They're all right. Yeah, they're not, yeah, like, yeah. super... Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I they're reliable. Re- reliable. <laughs> <laughs> they, all, they always show up. They're reli- they always show up on time at the right time, right? Yeah, yeah. They always show up at the right time when you need them. Those, they're there. Those, those, those cookies. Those white cookies are just there. You know. They, I mean, I know there are some some blue cookies out there. That blue may, cookies. You know. Um, Yellow cookies. Get some blue. Yeah, all the you know red cookies. cookies. Just, you know, all the, of the cookies, right? So we want to make sure that. I don't exclude any of the other cookies, even though I had this beautiful, delicious chocolate chip cookie. Let's make sure I The cookie was the one that was on the plate. Yes, yes. The cookie that was on the plate was the chocolate chip. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that. I like what you did there. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's yeah. a lot of goodness right there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, Mr. Ray. Yes, sir. Uh, I love hearing about how your week was going and talking about cookies, but uh, uh-huh. maybe we could dive into uh, all cookies matter oh, later. Yeah. yeah. Um, but let's talk about BLM. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what we. Oh, oh, oh. So. Oh man. So. You want to get a little spicy today, huh? We're gonna get, get spicy. A little, I little think. Little spicy today. That's what yeah. I think. That's that's. I feel like we that's should. That's what we what we want. Now I know um, with my Caucasian brothers and sisters, not too much spice. Y'all put a little red pepper flake sometime. That's a little too oh, much spice. But I think we're gonna, we're gonna get a little. We're a little but we're gonna get a little spicy today. I think we can get paprika, a little. Yeah, a little, little, little. little. I think we're gonna have to add a little bit more spice to it. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah. So I um. <clears throat> With with Black Lives Matter, there are so many different avenues that we can go down and that we can talk about and discuss about uh, BLM. And for me, I want to first gain an understanding of the first time you heard the phrase black lives matter how did that make you feel and when you first heard that what were the difference of feelings that may have happened as time progressed mm. <clears throat> Well, let's see. Uh, the first time I personally heard of BLM, Black Lives Matter, I didn't call it BLM, I'd, or mm. it was just Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Like the, I don't know. I guess it was the first time was during a protest, I think. I, I'm not 100% sure on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. first time I heard of it. No problem. And how did I feel? I felt. Um, that somebody was trying to call attention to like the thing that they were trying to call attention to, just like you would, um, you know, cancer awareness or, you know, um, something, something along those lines. Like, yeah. so, Hey, this yeah. needs attention. Yeah. Yeah. Like and if, if, if someone loves animals and animal cruelty and things that happen out there, some, you know, there are yeah. people who may, um, go to the streets and you know protest about the cruelty of animals type animals, of deal, yeah. and you just kind of looked at it that that way. Yeah, um, I don't think that black people are animals, but thank I you. think thanks, uh, thank you, thank you. Appreciate, <laughs> pre- pre- hey man, I sure do appreciate you doing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. Oh man. Okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So. But uh, yeah, no, I I just I just saw it as. You know, somebody trying to call attention to, you know, hey, uh, Black Lives Matter. Hey, we matter, you know. Um, and uh, that's that's uh, nothing harmful or, or you know, at first there was nothing that seemed out of place about what they were trying to do at all. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Um, and I would even go as far as to say there's really not that many movements going on other than like climate change at the, at the time, you know, climate change was a really big thing going on at simultaneously. Um, ironically enough. Yeah. And, um, uh, 
boy, it sounded a uh, hundred hundred years or a hundred years, just miles ahead of you know as far as common sense things go. Um, like he was like, okay, here's something that we can actually like fix. Yeah, you know, yeah. So here's something that we can. Here's something that's in front of actually, us. Something yeah. that we we see it's happening. We can make some changes yep. and uh, it'd be tangible. And we it's something that can. And it's real. It's right, it's right, right you know, in front of you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what did it do? It caused me to start looking up some of these things and start listening to people about it. And, of course, you know, as it gained traction, it, you know, made the news and stuff like that. So, yeah. And over the time, has your feelings changed, wavered, uh, had any type of a shift on the pendulum of where you first um, felt versus on a, on a, any other side on any point at any point in time? So yes, it has changed a lot. Okay. Um, and even it's even like been like, Oh, you know, I guess I didn't think of it like they, that way to, Oh, I guess I was wrong to think of, you know, to be kind of in line with these, these people that were doing these protests. Cause I was thinking, Oh, maybe I was in the wrong, you know, and now I think they're in the wrong actually. Yeah. And then, um, and then now I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure because which is fine. Like, yeah. which is perfectly fine because you yeah. don't have to have a yes or no, or be a hundred percent. You can't be a hundred percent about anything. Right. Yeah. You yeah. can't. And I get that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like, uh, what, what really kind of got me into this whole thing? Like I, I heard a lot, I listened to a lot, a lot of political stuff. Mm -hmm. And like I said before, in previous episodes, I listened to a lot or I kind of align with, uh, more of a conservative type of whatever mentality or whatever viewpoint. it is viewpoint. viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, after, after hearing a lot of people talk about BLM, I was like, okay, you know, like, give me your, give me your facts. I want to hear facts cause you know, and, and, uh, unfortunately it does get nuanced. It really does. And, uh, you know, me not being a professional in any of the things that would really qualify me to have like a professional opinion on it. I realized that, Hey, I should probably, it's responsible of me to know about some of these things and look at them. And, you know, it was, you know, some of these things were nearly 10 years ago. Crazy. Um, so, um, you know, just going through, uh, just, just today I was looking at, you know, the timeline between some of these, uh, big ones, you know, mm -hmm. big, uh, uh, events, you know, someone got shot by a police officer or multiple police officers. And then, you know, uh, a big protest happens and then BLM comes out and they, you know, organize the event, I guess, or whatever they do, mm -hmm. you know, I guess at, at least they accepted money. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. For sure. And, and I don't know. And we'll, and we'll, but, we, we, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get on, get in, get into that as well. But, uh, that's, that's as far as, um, you know, starting out, that's kind of like what my initial thought was is like, okay, well, people are, hurting people want to cause yeah. attention people want to um bring attention and awareness to a certain situation that's going on yeah. in our country and what what can we do to okay go ahead R oh, what i was going to say is that i have uh before blm was even around well i think i don't know maybe this is about the same time so uh our previous episode was about you know uh previous presidents and stuff yes. like that yeah. and uh barack obama one of the, I'm not sure if it's a hundred percent this, but, um, what, I don't know why either, but we, we talked about this a little bit. It's like a change happened in the U S where like some people felt like, I don't know, race relations got weird after Barack Obama was in, in place. Right. And he was there for a good eight years. Yeah. Two terms. Yeah. So, um, I don't know why, I don't know why, but somehow we found ourselves kind of in like a, um, a situation where 
white people and black people were very much against uh, at odds again, it seems like. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Um, and, you know, that there, there are so many different varying things that happened during that time. But you're I always say like you, you you're leading with you you lead with your heart when you say you don't understand that because you you have a good heart. Right. Whereas some people and, you know, I'm, I'm not that guy who throws, you know, the race card all the way around or who wants to be drama filled or anything. But there are people who no matter what happens, no matter what could have happened, they're just going to see, hey, there's a black dude that's there and I don't want it. Point blank period. And that's a lot of people's feelings. And they were going to do any and everything that they could to just cause ruckus and um, not see the, not want to be a part of that change or see these things. And that's when, you know, you have the, the guys with the tiki torches and, you know, walking in the forest and, you know, pro- professing that, you know, Caucasian man superior. We hate, you know, Negroes, Jews. We hate all these people and we want to bring them down. That was, you know, part of that deal because they were seeing change happening. They, they didn't want the change to happen. So do you feel like that was a lot of people <clears throat> like actually a lot of people? Yes, sir. 100%, like what qualifies yeah. as a lot of people in your view? See, and, okay. Like thousands or no, no, mi- tens oh, of no thousands? Mil- mil- yeah. Millions. Millions. millions? I was, yeah. There are millions of people here. I mean, what we just, so gosh, man, like last, well, at the last election, we like 70 something million voted for, uh, for Biden and 70 something million voted for Trump. You know, that's the most that's ever, you know, votes and, and all that's 150 million people just on, on voting wise, you know, yeah. and people not, and there are people who do not vote, who did not vote, who will not vote. So yeah, there are millions of people who would see someone in that position and just absolutely hate it because he was black. 100% my friend. See, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I, I don't, I'm sorry to say, I, I think I might have to politely disagree. And that's, that's fine. The reason why is because I don't think that there's a million people in the United States that would vote that don't like black people just because they're black. Say, say that one more time. So I don't think there is a million people in the United States that don't like black people just because they're black. I don't. I think the number has to be way smaller than you that. You think it's a lot lo- less than that, Paul? You, you, I think so. so. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> that, I, in, in that whatever world that you're living in is wonderful. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's a great world that you live in, my friend. But I, I just, I, we, we can, and like I said from from the beginning, we can just agree to disagree on on that one because there, like I said, I know your, I know your heart, and I know who you are. At your core. So I can't be upset with you or anything like that. But there are just so many just evil and wicked people in this world and in these United States um, that do not want change, who do not want things to um, to be different. And they would do anything that they can to fall in line and make sure those things don't happen. But um, Hmm. like I said, we you know, we can we can revisit this. I, I, re- I really want to revisit that um, at, a, at a point in time with you, but with- uh, That would be interesting. With, yeah, yeah, I think that'd be good, man. So, but with with hearing, you know, Black Lives Matter, I, um, you know, this, I, I, it, I think the trajectory of it, well, let me take this back. The start of it was around uh, Trayvon Martin. Right. So that's <clears> kind of where- That was a the, big start. It was a big start. That's where the hashtag uh, Black Lives Matter, that's where it first begun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't an organization yet. So this was like 20, 2012. Um, just to revisit that, it was uh, a young kid was in a neighborhood, just left a store. He was visiting family members, uh, was walking around. There was a gentleman who saw him, uh, felt that he wasn't supposed to be there. Uh, a pro, uh, called the police. Which is fine. Okay, you want to protect your neighborhood. You're on a neighborhood watch. Mm-hmm. Okay, whatever. Um, you hear the 911 call where the operator tells this gentleman, "Hey, chill out. Let the police get there. They'll figure it out." But this guy um, took it upon himself to go and approach this uh, kid, 
Um, who knows what? Who knows what actually happened in that time frame? We don't know, but we do know right. that George was seeking something. He was about some action. All right. So he goes there. Altercation happens. And a few moments later, um, a kid is killed. Kid dies. Um, and, you know, that's where, um, you know, people start to do a little bit of processing and he, he got arrested and things happen. People start raising crazy money for him. And then crazy, he, money. crazy money, crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. If I die, millions. I want at least a quarter of Man, what? millions. <laughs> like, millions, millions, millions. Mil, no, no, George Zimmerman. Or, excuse me. George, so Zimmerman. George, George Zimmerman yeah. got millions of dollars. Just oh, wait, people who were wait, 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 to him. George Zimmerman, the guy that shot the that guy. That shot Trayvon Martin. There were what? Hold on, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. completely so, misunderstood people, what you, you know, said. Yeah, so people um donated to George like a George Zimmerman fund and it got up to millions, man. It was a lot of money. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Huh. So he um he is acquitted, um, found not guilty in uh the killing of Trayvon. So um, Black Lives Matter starts then in 2013. I guess they get, you know, organized and get um, get filed as a nonprofit organization. They are 501, 501c3 nonprofit organization. So just like any other nonprofit organization, that's what they are. And their number one thing was just to uh, focus on police brutality, um, any racially motivated violence against black people. Um, and just to try to bring awareness to this because it it seemed as if, and I know Paul, you may be on the way and in, in, in this, this group that just didn't know that a lot of these things were happening to black people. Cause I shared some of my experiences that, uh, with you that happened yeah. to me and <clears throat> things that happened to me in high school. And it was getting to a point to where, um, we would see videos of, you know, guys just, you know, either, you know, not resisting, hands up, getting shot, um, getting shot in handcuffs, getting just, and then we'll see a video of, you know, uh, a messed out Caucasian kid running up on the cops, fighting the cops, punching, grabbing for the gun. And for whatever reason, we're seeing the ability for the cops to show restraint, um, get that individual under control, get them in handcuffs and get them in the car. And mm. it was like, we weren't seeing that on our end. My whole thing is, is if, if somebody committed a crime, yeah, like do whatever it is that they have to do to get that person, you know, um, you know, either, uh, you know, arrested or whatever. But man, it's like, we were just seeing such a despair, uh, 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 a despairing, uh, way of how just certain certain people were being treated so hmm. um i think that that's a uh, around that time we're seeing those videos and we're seeing you know like i said trayvon and, and others um that were on video and it was just like man like this has to stop and then that's when a lot of the protests were starting to happen wow yeah hmm. the the interesting thing to me is um how I, I didn't know too much about Trayvon Martin, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I think that was the first time that, uh, I think, I think I heard the words like hands up, don't shoot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just very, you know, uh, lots of, lots of protesting, you know, uh, jingles or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, okay, what is this stuff about? What yeah. are you guys talking about? And, um, I think, uh, that, that one just, um, and, and there are plenty of, okay, there are so many police interactions that don't go like how you think they would. The ones that we hear about on the news, especially, are almost worst case scenario. But the, the reality of it is, there's a lot of police interactions that we don't hear about that are just as crazy. Um, and uh, the reason why I brought this up was because um, I happen to have some, I know some people in law enforcement and I've also worked closely with law enforcement in the past and you just end up hearing a lot of, uh, crazy things that go on. And, um, the, 
there's so many crazy white people, so many crazy other people than black people that it didn't even register in my brain. Like, okay, you know, there's, uh, you know, police officers that, that have their eyes set on, you know, especially like definitely not killing black people. Didn't, didn't even, wasn't even in my wheelhouse, you know, maybe like people that are on crack or people that are on, you know, some kind of, and I'm being serious, like people that are on some kind of mind altering drug that makes them have literal superhuman powers. Mm -hmm. Like they can break your bone type thing yeah. just because, PCP you know, on their wit. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, Th they are. Yeah. And believe me, police are afraid of these guys <laughs> oh, yeah. and they will, they will just draw it out and okay, sir, uh, I'm going to shoot you now. <laughs> but, um, but in these situations, uh, they're just horrible. And a lot of them are nuanced. And um, what I mean by nuanced is uh, they're just not, to me, they don't seem as clear cut as the picture that we get. Like white guy shoots black guy because he's black. Um, that And, and uh, maybe that's not what the narrative was. It was more like a uh, white guy, it's just an inordinate amount of white cop shooting black people. Uh, you know, perpetrators or supposedly perpetrators. And then you find out later on that the, you know, the black guy was innocent or the black woman was innocent or whatever, or, you know, it wasn't the, the, the situation, the, the situation that, that was being the situation that was happening at the moment did not warrant for someone to be killed. Right. It, no, no matter what, it doesn't matter if it was a black cop, a white cop, a black, um, individual, um, that situation we were seeing, it was like these people should not have died because of X, Y, Z. Right. So, like I said earlier, when we're seeing these other instances happening where things are escalated so much more, but we're seeing that these people were able to be apprehended and um, go and have the justice that needed to be uh, taken against them. A hundred percent. So and also, I knew that um, just from working with law enforcement in the past in a previous career path, um, they have a federal thing that they have to keep up with on a daily and weekly and monthly and quarterly and yearly basis called a r racial profiling report. And um, like that's something that's built into their job. And they have to report how many black people they stop, they search, they whatever. And it's all to make sure that they're not you know, even statistically going after too many black people, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, obviously that was a problem in the past yeah. <laughs> or else they wouldn't be doing that's it. That's exactly what I, and you took the words out of my mouth and I'll tell people all the time, if there's paperwork involved or if there's something in a contract or if there's a policy and or procedure that's happening, uh, that may not make, uh, sense to us when we see it, there's a reason for it. Oh, yeah. There is absolutely a situation that happened that made that situation so crazy that mm -hmm. they did not want that to happen anymore or they wanted to make the, the changes. I've got something else too. Yeah. So uh, there's obviously a lot of things that we could get to on this episode, and uh, uh, we're going to keep it nice and tight for y'all uh, time wise. But um, something else along that same vein is. People that I've known in law enforcement, they know, ugh, I hate to say this, but they know uh, what states and cities are really terrible about racial profiling. And one of them happens to be Louisiana. Mm. I don't know if there's a specific parish or whatever that, uh, you know, is, is particularly bad, but that's for sure something that I've heard from, you know, law enforcement. Absolutely. From the top to the bottom, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, but, uh, but at the same time, well, and, and we live in Texas, right. And at the same time, some, a lot of the people that, um, uh, that really were the problem, a lot of them left when uh, police departments started requiring that their officers that are on patrol and, and are actually going to, you know, these crime scenes or scenes that, you know, uh, an incident, you know, whatever it is. And the people that are going to these things have a camera on them. All those guys that are wearing the body cams, 
they, you know, people that really had a, <laughs> the had problematic a guys had a problem. Said, they, they quit. We, we, yeah. We're not doing it. Huh? Yeah. yeah that's so, tough, man. That's tough when you, you know, you're and because it, it should be, it should be looked and viewed at as something that should, be a safety precaution for the officer and for uh, the civilian uh, for both people. And like I said, it, it just, it, it, there's so many different things that we can discuss about the police and oh, ways yeah. that we want to dive into how things could be. And um, it's, it's, it's a lot, uh, but with, Oh, I was going to say, um, is there anything in particular that stands out to you about, obviously, F George Floyd? and Yeah, I was going to say that you, we have a full timeline. And mm -hmm. I mean, I know if, if you want to touch on um, certain individuals, I mean, we can. Like I, I talked about Trayvon, that was uh, a real tough one. And then mm -hmm. um, I, you know, we have like Mike Brown that happened. Eric Garner was um, another uh, that happened. Um, you know, we... we it's just it's just a lot of them. It's a lot mm -hmm. of them. What was there? And we we all know the the one that really just took everybody by storm was the George Floyd because I mean it was during the pandemic and mm -hmm. I feel that if the pandemic didn't happen, I don't think that um, it would have got as much notoriety as it did because everything was just shut down. Mm -hmm. Nothing was going on. Nothing was happening. People were in their homes and literally you had black kids, white kids, soccer moms, multi-millionaires, billionaires, people in the slums, people in the hood, people in middle class, upper middle class. Everybody was able to see what transpired oh, yeah. with that. Oh, yeah. That was something that had never been seen before. And. We're watching this on CNN, uh, Fox all News, MSNBC, oh, man. all uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Everybody is broadcasting, showing a grown man with his knee and another man's neck. And this man just died right in front of us. Died. Died. He is dead. And that, I think, like I said, that really showed and I say this with love right mm. that showed people like you who have the heart like you do who maybe um, don't have the capacity well not not the capacity you don't have the um, the mindset to think uh, that hey this is something that happens it's happened before it happens all the time this was something that just maybe caught you off guard to where it's like man I didn't even know that this was something that could take place. And there are a lot of people like you who were just like, I had no idea. And that garnered a lot of attention. And that's when we were really, really started seeing an abundance of protests happening. Mm -hmm. And the protests part of all of this, as we say, is so nuanced because you get to a point to where it's like, okay, you have a protest, you know, your your regular just, hey, we're just going to walk the streets. You have your unruly protests that people may call them. Um, you have riots. And then you have riots and looting. And it's like all of those are different. But when it came to Black Lives Matter, it was only well not only it was a lot of riot and looting was the basis of it that was being broadcast and it got a bad narrative as hey these are the bad things that are happening and you know you can look at the situation like bad people are just going to be bad people so if a protest is happening and if some knuckleheads get together i don't care what color their skin is if some knuckleheads say hey it's a protest happening. We know cops are not going to be here in the area. We're going to bust down this target and we're taking everything out the target. That has nothing to do with the organization or any organization or any protest. But it was like, hey, this is happening because of y'all, because of this protest. And I think that's unfair because bad people are just going to be bad people. Mm. Bad people are going to do bad things regardless. And then you'll see, you know, I, you know they were saying they were like agent provocateurs, I believe they called them. They're people who would just go to these events and just cause 
trouble. They'll they be walking around with bats and just, you know, smashing windows and doing things. They're not even there for the protest, mm -hmm. but they're just creating angst and making a hoopla and just bringing negativity to the movement that was just terrible. And that, that, that was something that was just real hard to see because it was like, there are so many people who are trying to oh, I bring, agree. who are trying to bring such a, a light to this, to, to make change. Whereas people were just really doing some bad things. Like I said, the riots and the looting and, um, you know, messing over people's businesses. Like I, that's not right. Like you shouldn't mess over somebody's small business. These are families who have put blood, sweat, tears into this thing. And y'all are, you know, causing harm to them that, that those things shouldn't have been happening. So I've got, so, um, what really turned me off about BLM in general was the rioting and the looting. Um, what, you know, cause they would interview like a lot of the people that were like directly involved with like setting cars on fire and pouring gas, literally cast pouring gas to lean on stuff. And they're like, well, what, um, you know, what, what do you have to say, you know, to this stuff? And, and, uh, I mean, you can Google, I mean, there's tons of stuff on yeah, Google, yeah. lots and lots of interviews and all that and coverage and all that. And, um, there was a lot. So this is what I will say overall, black lives do matter. Um, obviously I think that, uh, black lives matter as much as anybody's lives matter. But in this case, I think that, you know, if somebody wants to call attention to uh, these these people dying in the ways that they did, whether it be police or non-police or, you know, um, what I believe in is the system that we have to right those wrongs. And I would say, you know, f at least three out of the five major ones were were corrected in the system as in like, you know, people got retribution legally because of it, or people were fired or, you know, people were, um, you know, convicted. Now there, there's definitely a lot of nuance to that, but that's at least my view now as I've, as I've looked at things over the years and I don't have, I don't have perfect recall. I can't go back and, and look at, you know, the specific data mm -hmm. points mm -hmm. right now. Um, but, um, and they're all very, none of them are cut and dry. They're just not. Yeah. I would yeah. say probably the most cut and dry one was Trayvon Martin's deal. And, uh, you know, that was in, in my opinion. And, uh, it's just, you know, and half of these, um, things that were happening shouldn't have ha ever happened. Yeah, yeah, they just shouldn't yeah. have. Yeah. Like I said, like the, like the Breonna Taylor with the mm -hmm. no knock search warrant type of deal. That was something, but you know, when, and, and I'll, I'll just speak on this portion briefly about when, when someone says that black lives matter, I find it difficult when someone would get upset with that. Mm -hmm. Um, because black saying that black lives matter should not, uh, go into your external auditory of meatus, mm -hmm. your ears as saying that your white life doesn't matter. Your Hispanic life doesn't matter. Your Asian life doesn't matter. Your this or that life does not matter. That's not what should be at the forefront of what you hear. Um, and that's where the. Uh, we got to all lives matter. And that was the, the, the number one, uh, what well, was one of the um, combats that a lot of people wanted to say versus black lives matter. No, black lives don't matter. All lives matter. So yes. Okay. If all lives matter, then that means that all lives under the sun should matter, which mm -hmm. equates to there's a subset of individuals who don't feel that their lives matter if we want all lives to matter here in this great country that we supposed to live in, that we're supposed to all be on the same team, we're supposed to be us first, number one, mm -hmm. then these subset of individuals lives are supposed to matter if we're looking at the all portion of it. And it just, it just, I didn't understand when people just only wanted to just yell all lives, all lives, all lives. Yes, we get that. But at this moment in time, we're talking about the black lives and you can't even say that 
yes, okay, I, I get where you're saying yes. I know where it comes from. Matter. I get that, and it's like, gosh, man, like that's that's tough, man. That was that's just, that just I just didn't understand why people had to be so combative with that. I know why. Tell me. I feel like I do. Tell well, me. for for the most part, and maybe this is true for. I'd say maybe like at least 50% of people. The reason why is the same reason why when you go, oh man, I'm feeling really tired today. You know, I just feel like I can't get, get enough rest, you know, um, or I'm feeling sick. I've got this stomach ache that just won't go away. Or man, I've got this really bad allergy problem, man. And then somebody else goes, man, I have allergies really bad every day, like chronically. And then you're going to come over here and complain about this. And then it's that guy. <laughs> it's that guy. The guy that has zero pity. Mm. The guy that has zero like empathy. Empathy or it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Looking and at and yeah. I, I, I think that that's maybe like 50%. I feel like that's a big number of people. Um, I'm not one of those. I feel like if somebody wants to go and, and say, um, uh, you know, I, I'm not that way in most things, I would say, but, uh, you know, some things I am, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, for somebody to say, well, you guys don't have it that bad. Um, that's, that's really inconsiderate when you're talking about somebody's life, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, if, if we're talking about an illness, that's one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I work every day with one leg, you know, there's plenty of amputees out there. Oh yeah. For there's, sure. You know, and they're like, wow, well, just thriving and surviving and doing wonder what it's like to have two again. legs. Yeah, you know? for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I get what you're coming from with that. I yeah. Where you're from, right? But, um, like statistically the, the thing is I forget how many, um, black people there are in the U S compared to other races. And you know, there's a lot like of white people. Yeah. I, yeah. It's a small it's, amount. It's small. Yeah. I think it's, 13%. It's, it's mm -hmm. a teen, it's teen percentage. It's a very small amount. And the amount of white people that get shot. And, and this is another thing that you might hear from the all lives matter guys. You know, it's a really small amount of deaths compared to the amount of white people that die in police custody, mm -hmm. which is true statistically. Yes, the the but numbers, I, yeah, the numbers will be on your side because there's right. just more, right? Yeah. There's just, yeah, yeah. it's just, uh, like a numbers thing. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, yeah, and, and if it is racially motivated, mind blown. Um, but, uh, you know, that's even worse. It's even worse. And that, <laughs> that's, that's the thing. Even it's even worse. worse. And it, but I just look at it as, man, just one, one is enough. It shouldn't even, it shouldn't, it just shouldn't happen at all. And, you know, we, when yeah. it, so you, you had the, the middle, I'll say that the All Lives Matter was maybe a little of the middle ground towards, um, the other side of the pendulum, and then you had the Blue Lives Matter, and when the Blue Lives Matter hit, man, that was that was a wild time, man. That was a and wave. That was a that was a wave of ooh wee, man. And I'll tell you, um, I've shared with you, I respect the police. Um, my, I have uncles, my great uncles, who are my grandfather's brothers, are. Uh, have been policemen in our state and in our hometown, very well respected. Um, I've always had nothing but love and respect for them. They're, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're coworkers. We've met a lot of them and been around them. Uh, we've uh, done things for the Louisville Police Department where we've given, uh, done like little drives with them to help uh, just to like during Christmas time, myself and my family. So I have a lot of respect for police all the way through and through. Um, but like I said, it just got to a point to where it was just so militant and it's like just, ugh, and it was just yeah. nasty. And it was just like, it, I just, I just don't understand how mm. this can equate this and this. And now where, where it all started from to where we wanted to right a couple of wrongs and figure out a way to make things right. better and right. make it, uh, make it feel safer for people who look like me. Um, it, that that's, that's gotten lost. And, also with, you know, the the foundation and then having bad people in the foundation. Maybe you have some people who were corrupt, moved some things, purchased some things here. I mean, it's it's a it's a at the end of the day, it's a nonprofit organization. I'll say that. And we can pull any nonprofit organization and look at some numbers. And there may be some <laughs> things that's happening in a lot. I, I have some friends who have nonprofit organizations who uh, profit them very well. 
in the nonprofit it organization, just unfortunately. And like I said, I'm not trying to call nobody out <laughs> or say you're right or, or this is right or this is wrong. Ray's but got a I list, know I guess. some folks who have nonprofit organizations <laughs> who are profiting very, very well. So can I say some something mistakes? about that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jump in. Okay, so um, BLM is a nonprofit organization, just in case you didn't catch that. And they, um, they're... <sighs> The, the whole idea behind a nonprofit or organization is not so that, I mean, it's supposed, it's a tax thing. Okay. So a person, uh, okay. I'm going to break this down even further. Okay. So a business to the IRS is its own entity. So it's something that exists outside of you. It's like a person, but it's not a person, right? It's an entity. Just like you're an entity to the to to the uh, IRS, right? Um, and so the rule is when you form this entity, you know, like you've got corporations, you've got uh, LLCs, LLCs you've got, yeah. mm-hmm, and uh, um, you can even form trust. You can get tr- form a yep, trust. form a trust. All different you are all different kinds of things. So you're creating these these entities that are defined in a certain way, and a nonprofit is made to where from the get go, you are not supposed to have an abundance or a uh, leftover amount of money at the end of the year. Unlike a business, like a regular business where they're trying to have a profit. They're trying to build a profit to show that they're worth a certain amount. So a business is worth you know, whatever amount of money <laughs> you don't want a regular business to be not profitable. You have to be profitable, right? So that means that you're making more money than you're spending. A nonprofit is kind of the opposite. Mm-hmm. You're basically wanting to spend all of your money. And regardless of if you put the whole profit thing aside, you still pay employees. And depending on how your nonprofit is set up, you can have a person or multiple people earning money or using this money for whatever way that they want to use it. They just got to make sure that the entity doesn't show a profit at the end of the year. Yeah. That's all that a nonprofit means. That's it. And like I said, there's, there's a bunch of nuanced tax stuff that that's mixed into that, but that's what a nonprofit is. Mm-hmm. You, you can't, your, your business can't make any money by the end of the year. You got to spend it all. Yeah. So um, if it, if it, I mean, that could be, quote unquote, asset allocation that mm-hmm. can be your board of directors receiving a end of the year X, Y, Z. Um, if, if the president, whoever you have on your uh, your leadership staff will get X, Y, Z at the end of the year. So there, there's just so much that can be done with with that. So I know, you know, I, I can. I can only imagine going from just a grassroots hashtag to literally like at a snap just getting millions and millions and millions of dollars like at and just not knowing I'm, I'm sure they didn't have the 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 structure or the format to be able to to do that so like i said i don't, no. don't want to make excuses for people but i just think that when some people reach for that one they just reach in to kind of just put a little more mud on the situation but you have to understand that there there, there are things that nonprofit organizations have to do and that they, that they do. So, um, so can I ask you a question? Yeah, my man. If you formed a, uh, nonprofit because somebody died and, uh, you were especially offended and passionate about how to reconcile and bring justice to the families that went through whatever happened, if you formed a nonprofit, you said, hey, I'm going to form a nonprofit and we're going to start a GoFundMe page and this is what we're going to do. We're going to give 90% of our profits, of our uh, proceeds to uh, the families that were affected by XYZ happening. Mm-hmm. What, would you, what, would, what would people expect you to do? Yeah, they're going to expect you to put that, that 90 in there. And for me, I, I'm, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even go that route. I would just say that we would make sure that um, that these families are taken care of and that, um, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't put a numerical value on what it is that 
uh, we would be giving back to them. Because like we said, especially if this is your first time, if OK, if we if we want to, you know, rent, let's say we want to find a, a a place, a headquarters. So we're looking for headquarters. Mm-hmm. We got to make sure that the rent's taken care of. We got to make sure that somebody's answering the phones. We have oh, to make for sure people that running it. We got to make sure. Yeah. So it's like I, I can't say that I'm going to give 90 percent because now. I'm in over my head. I'm just trying to keep the building open. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. We're trying to fly the families to meet each other. And then I didn't know that these tickets were going to cost us. So it, it's just so, so, so much. So, but for me, I just would, I would not have put a, a number on it. That's for you for personally. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what we're referring to right now is the organization of BLM. Uh, the, one of the founders or a couple of the founders mm-hmm. um, yep. bought a, a multi-million dollar house mansion um in and this is the critique of the right or the you know opposite side Mm -hmm. some would say is that um that the one of the co-founders bought a mansion in a basically predominantly white neighborhood and um like very far away from any black people which i already have qualms with that argument anyway but um, it's kind of a it's kind of a slight if you do that, right? In my in my opinion, so like you have you're like a founder of the Black Black Lives Matter, and you go into a predominantly white, white neighborhood and buy one of the most expensive properties. I there. Ticket, I said that's that's maybe may ticket tacky. I'm not going to judge anybody off that because no, no, not judging, at, <clears throat> but like saying like that's what you'd kind of want to do. Really? Oh, I mean, you want to be able to find the the best wherever it, wherever it is. So, I mean, I don't we, you don't know if it's the the best neighborhood. What what um, what's the area looking like? Because it's, because because what, what, what I understood is that they were purchasing this for they were going to be doing things in the house. The house was going to be um, they're going to be recording. They're going to be hosting people, having events there and things like that. So, yeah, I would want it in a nicer upscale place with a lot of room to be able to maneuver around and have people do things. So, heck yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that. I, I, I don't see why having that asset would, you know, deter some people. And like I said, it was six million. It's a, it was a six million dollar house in <sighs> California. Well, no, no, no. In California, though. So it's like that's a lot. It's, I it's, mean, it's, it's good. It's, it's 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 money for sure. Yeah. But. A six million dollar house in California versus a six million dollar house in Highland Park. Hey, man, that's that's a, that's a huge, things. that's a huge, that's a things. huge difference. A six yeah. million dollar house in you know, Highland Village yeah. versus you know a six million dollar house in California. No, I agree. Yes, that's that's yeah. Big for us, difference. it sounds so, pretty crazy. Yeah, so I, I would I, I would say you know you, you, I, I, I'm I'm not getting too too wrapped up on on, on that, but. Yeah, I know a lot of people. They're they're focusing, you know, on on those couple of different things. So, um, as far as as far as that goes, I, all I have to say is uh, they had many many years to figure out what transparency looked like in their organization, and mm-hmm. there's just not much. There's a whole bunch of black people. Um, yeah, because I looked, I looked on all over online trying to find like you know, what are black people thinking about this? Mm -hmm. And people were pretty behind like, oh yeah, we were conned. And I was like, okay. um, So much infighting and so much um, people branching off and and doing Mm -hmm. their own things here and there. And I I, I don't like it, man. I I wish that they could, you know, figure out, um, like we say, the the full transparency, get get some structure Mm -hmm. um, so that it could be, you know, Streamlined better. Like I, I really wish that that could that could happen. But let's start our own BLM. Um. So I have. <laughs> so I, I I have one just one other thing that um to kind of bring this into kind of like where we are currently right yeah. now. So there is um, an incident that happened down in Austin, Texas. So oh, yeah. we are in North Texas. Austin is more in the Central Texas area. So back, I believe, it was in twenty twenty. Um, there was a protest that was happening, a uh, Black Lives Matter protest that was happening in Austin. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a gentleman by the name of Garrett Foster who was killed um, at this protest. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Daniel Perry. Uh, he was a Uber driver and he was in his automobile. And from what I'm reading, and I don't know, we we don't the 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 timeline says that he he knew where the protest was happening 
kind of went veered out of the way, ran a red light and kind of got into the crowd of the protest. So he's in his car in the crowd of the protest. Didn't run over anybody. Didn't run over. Did not run over anybody. But he is making he he's he he looking for some action. That's what I like to say. He looking for some action. And there was there somebody were, that ran through somebody. Yes. People so before. yes. But he, he just ran, like I said, he just ran a red light. So he mm-hmm. didn't run over anyone, but he just ran a red light getting into that. Like I said, he's looking for some action, kind of like how Kyle Rittenhouse went where he went looking for some action. Um, so he's in the middle of this um, of the protest and uh, Mr. Garrett Foster had um, had a rifle with him and uh, Daniel Perry stated that he felt threatened for his life and he pulled his pistol out and he shot uh, Mr. Foster and killed him. So um, just recently, Actually, it was this week, last week, uh, Mr. Perry was. Yeah. yeah, So recently, Mr. Perry was found guilty Mm -hmm. and uh, he was guilty for the killing of Mr. Foster. Now, he tried (laughs) to claim self-defense. He tried to claim stand your ground because, you know, Texas uh, is at will state. We you 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 open carry and you can, you know, stand your ground. So it was kind of a convoluted situation that was going on. But open carry and stand your open, ground. Laws. Yes. Oh, yeah. With the open carry and stand your ground and mm-hmm. what, how this, you know, played out with these two gentlemen. And mm-hmm. um, I, we I just saw that our governor is looking to possibly pardon this man who killed a man at a protest. He went looking for some action, found some action, killed someone. Um, Mr. Foster never raised his gun, never uh, put, put, never had the firearm um, at him. There are pictures uh, that, that show um, eyewitness accounts, but there are some pictures that were taken with and the rifle is pointed at the ground. Uh, and uh, this man may get pardoned and may may be free. And that hurts my heart. And this has nothing to do with. A black person. These were two Caucasian gentlemen. One Caucasian gentleman killed another Caucasian gentleman mm-hmm. at a Black Lives Matter protest. And I think it's, it's, it's terrible. And it's just a terrible, terrible situation all around. It is terrible. Uh, all these situations are terrible. But um, this one being, you know, uh, kind of recently ruled on. Um I would say I've, I've looked at the pictures and back when this first happened, uh, when did this happen? Uh, I think it was 2020. Yeah. 2020. So I think it was, uh, it was July of 2020 when this happened, black lives matter protest. And I see, I see both sides in a way. So, um, from the picture that I saw, if you've ever carried um, an AR anything or like a, you know, uh, a long rifle, you have to carry it in such a way to really kind of like not be threatening to other people. Like you got to have it kind of slung on your back. Right. And if you're getting ready to be able to fire, you've got to hold it like this. Right. And this is the position that um, Daniel Perry had his rifle in. But if you look at the picture, Daniel Perry had his, the the no, Garrett Foster Garrett Foster had, Garrett Foster I'm sorry yeah had the rifle. excuse me yeah. Garrett Foster had the rifle and he's outside of the car yeah. he's in this group of people uh, for this march and um, he's got the rifle pointed not towards the ground necessarily he's got it like perpen not not horizontal, not horizontal to the ground but he's got it angled, about like this angled, yeah. And it's really hard to tell if he's actually because you can shoot through a door real easy for sure. Uh, you know for sure. Yeah, we were just talking about Whoa, that. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, and um, and the the deal is, the guy's standing up. So he's standing up. The gun is like this, not not quite like that. It was more maybe a little bit more towards the ground, but still, you can fire into a car and hit somebody, and get their stomach or something like that, like this, right? And there is no telling exactly what happened in that situation. That's why it is so like, ugh. Mm-hmm. like, okay, yeah, both of you were in the wrong. This guy, Daniel Perry, the reason why everybody thinks that he went in there to instigate, um, or the major reason anyway, is because he was messaging somebody on social media saying, you know, there's, there's these 
uh, protest going on and, um, you know, I'm not afraid to kill somebody, yeah, yeah. you know, if, if it comes to them trying to hurt me or blah, 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 my car, I could have said that I could have said that I could have been like, you know, if I li- I would never do this because I'd never live in the center of Austin. Ugh. I would, I would never live in, in that area probably. Um, but if I did, I'd be like, yeah, I mean, if I'm going to, if I, if it comes down to me, you know, the provider for three kids and, you know, um, uh, partner to one, you know, um, son to many and, you know, or this other guy that's, you know, out here like dangerously slinging a gun at me. Yeah. It's probably going to be them, not me. You know, I hate to say it, but I mean, I've got to, I've got to feed my kids somehow. Yeah. And that's, that's you being a man for sure. And that's, yeah. that's protecting and, you know, being that protecting the provider as you know, we, we are, uh, my only thing is that you wouldn't be that type of guy to be going out and I wouldn't have been and, there and seeing and looking for that action. I that's, just wouldn't and, have that, been there. and that's the, that's the problem I have with these situations and with Trayvon's situation and, and other situations yeah. like this is that the individuals, cow these, this, you know, Daniel Perry, Kyle Rittenhouse, these individuals are people who went seeking some action. And that's that's my only if if you if you didn't want to yeah. be about that action, don't be about that action and stay wherever you are. But if you're going to seek action and if you're putting yourself in a place to where you are bringing uh, you are exciting at the situation then that, that's, that's just not right. I just don't think that's right. I agree. And I, I actually was really for uh, talking about Kyle Rittenhouse. So he was, he, uh, that's another situation where no black people were harmed, Correct. but they were harmed. Uh, you know, shooting happened at yeah. uh, BLM, uh, what turned into a riot and looting and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, you know, as a whole, there were a lot of BLM marches that turned into riots that turned into lootings that turned into like businesses moved out. Like mm-hmm. they were like, peace, I'm never coming back here. Like yeah. franchises, big box stores, yeah. Wendy's yeah. being one, um, Kroger, like, you know, big names. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so, uh, I, I actually was pretty, um, you know, I had kind of, when I first heard about Kyle Rittenhouse, I was like, I kind of admire this guy because he's a young guy that went to go protect his friend's stuff. But then when I got all the details, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to think about it now. Um, you know, fortunately I'm not him and I didn't make that decision. Uh, yes. Right. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. uh, uh, you know, the fact that he went pretty far out of his way to be there in a really bad situation, you know, I don't know. I don't know what it's like to live in one of those areas where, your livelihood is taken from you because you have a little shop of whatever it is mm-hmm. over there selling whatever. And then people just suddenly take your stuff and your insurance company's like, well, that's your fault. Um, go fight it in court. You yeah. know, we've got, yeah. we're inundated with insurance claims. Oh, I get it. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. That you is. know, yeah. but, yeah. um, but he was like, he doesn't even live there. Like yeah. there are a lot of things. It's like, too many who factors. does just, that? Yeah, like you're not that perfect factors. of a guy, you yeah. know, yeah. I believe you up to a certain point, but nobody's that good yeah. anyway. Because I, cause we, we saw instances where people who were protecting their stores mm-hmm. where they had, you know, they were outside their store and it was like, mm-hmm. Hey, look here, you just keep on walking. You keep on moving. Uh, I'm yeah. right here. Me and Bubba, we right here. Uh, I got Johnny over there. Uh, y'all do what y'all want to do. Don't touch our store. Just don't touch mm-hmm. our stuff. Mm-hmm. They weren't looking for action, but they were protecting so that they can continue to provide for their families, which is admirable and respect uh, respectful. So I feel I like it. I feel like somebody like Kyle Rittenhouse would have been really good in a military situation hmm. um, because you know it's those guys that need to uh, be kind of excited to be ready. Yeah. You know, Yeah, but, um, in this situation, it's like, you know, you're just kind of looking for it now. Just looking so, for it. yeah, just looking for it. Uh, but, uh, anyways, but yeah, well, I mean, um, Oh, we didn't even talk about, talk about chop. I'm sorry. Do you remember chop? No. Chop. So that was the, that was the area where, um, I forget. Oh my gosh. I forget where it was, but, um, Protesters, oh, Chaz. Is it Chaz? Protesters took over a whole part of a city. 
and oh, uh, and no police were allowed in and that was up like in Portland or somewhere. Yes, up there, yeah, and up in okay, Oregon, yeah, yeah. Up in, yeah, up in Portland, they took over um, a whole, yeah, they took over a whole block. Yeah, but anyways, there's a lot yeah, of yeah. things to talk about with this. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gonna yeah. bring us in? But, yeah, with um, you know, with with all that, I mean, I I appreciate you being able to be vulnerable with us, man, and and share uh, just your experience with seeing Black Lives Matter, understanding Black Lives Matter, being able to see the nuance in all of these situations and to know that, look, we don't care about the color of your skin. We just all want to just feel like we matter. We, and I, and I thank you for being able to be, be that person. So, um, yeah, this was, uh, this was, this was good for me. I'm glad I was able to, to contain my emotions because whenever I, I do talk about these things, um, you know, I just think about, you know, just my life and, certain situations I've been in and how I'm thankful that they didn't go left or they didn't go the way that they, they went. And I always try to keep a, a cool head in, in all of those. So, um, I'm just, I'm thankful that, uh, I have the life that I have. I'm thankful for people like you who are able to have these conversations and, uh, hopefully that, um, people can see us have these conversations and possibly be able to share their experiences and share their thoughts with, with other people as well. So, um, but that's, uh, that's our episode guys. Uh, we thank y'all for sitting here with us listening. Um, if you can, um, go to our YouTube page, uh, subscribe, like, um, I mean, we're, we're on all the platforms. Uh, we TikTok, Facebook, um, comment, um, on the YouTube channel. You know, if, if, if there's something that you would like to express about, uh, this topic or any other topics that we've uh, discuss. We would love to hear from you guys just so that we can um, interact with you all and, and just get uh, different experiences that you all may feel or or, or, or have gone through as well. So 100%. Um, but yeah, so for uh, for that, man, uh, I'm Ray. Uh, this is my buddy, Paul. Um, we are the No Color Thick Skin podcast. Um, thank you all again for your time. Um, we want you all to have a, a great week. Take care. Peace. Have a good one, y'all.